Hey everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to my video series on building a job board in Laravel. Over the course of these tutorials, I'll show you how to develop an application from scratch using the Laravel framework and a variety of packages to add some necessary functionality and features. What we're going to end up building should look something like this, the Lara Jobs job board. As you can see, there's a header with some buttons to post a job or access your account. Scrolling down, you'll find a list of jobs sorted by post date. Some are highlighted, and all of them contain a title, a location, a company, and a variety of keyword tags. Clicking on one of them sends us to the original job posting, where we can apply for the position in question. If we take a closer look at that link, we can see that it first sends us to this intermediate job link with a unique ID after it. This is most likely used to record our visit for tracking purposes, after which we are redirected to the appropriate listing page that we saw before. RemoteOK.io OK is another great example of what we're going to try to accomplish. Just like with Lara Jobs, we have a few links up top to post a job or sort by particular tags, and then scrolling down, we see a list of positions available. This board also differs in that it includes a large text area full of content regarding the job that we can access directly on this job board instead of being immediately directed to the application page. Like Lara Jobs, clicking apply takes us to an intermediate URL and then redirects us to the actual job application page. So that's what we're after. Let's take a look at what we're starting with. I have a completely new, out-of-the-box Laravel application that I've set up in my local environment at laraveljobboard.test. In this first video, we're going to set up the models, migrations, and data architecture necessary to store the information related to our job board. In our code base, we already have one model by default thanks to Laravel, the user. But we'll need a few more. Let's open up the terminal and create them. This is easy with Artisan. We can call make model and then the model class name that we want to create. First, we'll need a listing model. These are the individual job postings. Tagging on this migration flag at the end of the command will add both the model class file as well as a migration file that we'll use to create and populate the database table associated with it. Next, we'll make another for clicks. This will record someone clicking on the apply links in our job postings. And finally, tag should be our last model that we'll need. These will store, as the name implies, tags for each listing. These are all the models we'll need, but we'll need one more migration that couldn't be created with our models. Our tag and listing models will be attached to one another with a many-to-many -many relationship. I'll go into more detail about that later, but this means that we'll need an intermediate pivot table for each of these models as IDs. We can create that with the artisan make migration command and with the Laravel convention of both model names in alphabetical order. Create underscore listing underscore tag underscore table. Create listing tag table. All right, all set. Let's close out of the terminal. Now we're going to go through each of our model classes and prepare them for our application, adding in relationship methods and guarded attributes. First, let's take a look at the user model. We'll keep the default fillable array, and scrolling to the bottom, let's add in a listings method. Since each user can have multiple listings associated with it, we'll return this, has many, and pass in the listing model. Let's open up that listing model and add in a protected guarded attribute set to an empty array. For this and every other model in this application, I'm going to allow mass assignment on every column by default. Under that, we'll create a clicks method and return this has many, passing in the click class. Each listing has multiple clicks or apply button presses associated with it. And defining the inverse of the listings function on the user model, we have a user method that returns this belongs to user. Finally, a tags method. Return this belongs to many and the tag class. Remember, we've set up the listing tags relationship as many to many. One tag can have many different listings associated with it and one listing can have many different tags associated with it. 
Speaking of which, next the tag class. Again, protected guarded is set to an empty array. And we just have one relationship to define, listings. Return this, belongs to many, and pass in the listing class. Finally, the click class. Protected guarded, empty array. And just like tag, this one has one relationship. It's associated listing model. Return this, belongs to, and the listing class. All right, now that we have the models finished, we can turn our attention toward the migrations, setting the column names and types that we'll be using in our database tables for these models. First, let's look at the create listings table migration. Thanks to the artisan command that we ran earlier with the migration, we have a nice boilerplate already set up where it's creating the listings table and filling in an ID, as well as the timestamp columns. Now we just have to decide what data our listings table will hold, and thus what we'll end up using to show with our listings on the finished website. Well, first, we'll need a foreign ID for the user model that we have a relationship with. You could use Laravel's included foreign ID for method, passing in the user class, but I prefer specifying it out in full as an unsigned big integer for user ID. Next, we'll need a string for the title and a string for the slug, which will be included in the URL for an individual listing. A string for the company name, a string for the location, like a city, state, or country, a string for our logo, which we're going to tack on this nullable method to, since it shouldn't be required. If a logo isn't present, we can always use a placeholder image or something similar. Next, a couple of booleans, one to determine if the listing is highlighted, which we're going to set the default value of to false, and another to determine if the listing is active, whose default is true. This will be helpful if we want to eventually run a cron job or something regular to expire listings over a certain amount of days. Next, a text column for the listing's content. This could be fairly long and in the form of raw HTML. And finally, a string to hold the apply link where a visitor will be redirected to when clicking on an apply button. All right, that looks good. Let's turn our attention to the create tags table migration. This one is pretty straightforward. We'll need a string for the name and a string for the slug. That's it. Now create clicks table. Like we did with the listing table, we'll need a foreign key to attach it to the listing, unsigned big integer, listing ID. I also want to store the user agent for a visitor who clicked on the apply button. It could come in handy for tracking and showing statistics like browser software or device type. And finally, a string for the IP address, which we'll also set as nullable. We have this pivot table that we created for our listing tag relationship. This needs just two columns, so we can get rid of the default ones that Laravel put in and replace it with an unsigned big integer for listing ID and an unsigned big integer for tag ID. That's it. Now if we head to our terminal and run artisan migrate, you can see that each of the migration files was parsed correctly and the migration was ran successfully. Just a quick note, you might have noticed that I'm using DCR artisan here instead of PHP artisan. That's because my local dev environment for this is running through Docker, and as such, I'm running my artisan commands through Docker so that it's attaching correctly to the MySQL database our application is using. DCR is just a shortcut that I have on my system for Docker Compose Run. If you'd like to learn more about how I set up Docker for local Laravel development, check out the link to that video in the description. So our migrations ran, and we can verify that by taking a look at our database. I have my database name set to Homestead, and opening it up, I can see each of the tables that we specified available here. Opening up the listings table, our columns that we specified in the migrations are showing up successfully as well. In the next video, we'll take a look at generating test data to fill up these tables.